they can create hundreds of new species of aliens who don't exist, right? But they can't have one brown character. When you go to writing school and you're writing uh, a script, the main character, if you're writing your first script, you always write yourself. I think I'm so fed up with seeing, um, you know, a brown character <laughs> be a taxi driver, uh, a terrorist. Let's be real here, right? I think diversity is so, so important in Hollywood and, you know, uh, mainstream movies that we, everybody watches because they have universal appeal right now, right? So mm -hmm. Riz Ahmed, who's an amazing, amazing actor, um, is the first Muslim to be nominated for the best actor, leading actor role in uh, in the Oscars, right? And that for me was huge, right? Now he didn't win and, you know, uh, I'm not going to go into the debate about who should have won and who shouldn't have. Um, that's, 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 you know, people can debate about that everywhere else. My, for me, it was a big thing because, you know, one of the things that growing up that I've always kind of uh, really felt strongly about is the lack of representation in movies, right? Being somebody mm -hmm. who's brown but gr uh, born and brought up in the UK, right? Um, a lot of people say, oh, no, but there's Bollywood and there's Nollywood and there's all these other words, right? It's like, yeah, it's it's, it's all well and good, but you, you don't fully connect with those movies. Like, yes, you enjoy them yeah. and stuff, but it's very different, you know, being born and brought up in the West, right? But then, you know, I, I always say this about Marvel movies, right? You've got the Avengers, right? they can create hundreds of new species of aliens who don't exist, right? But they can't have one brown character, right? It's like one Asian. So I'm talking like South Asian, somebody that looks like me, right? Or Middle Eastern sort of character. They can't have one of those, right? It's just like, come on, you can actually make new species of aliens, but you can't have one of these. And one thing that I want to emphasize is I'm not talking about diversity for the sake of diversity, just to take a box. No, I'm talking about the fact yeah. that there's so many talented actors out there, right? And also like, okay, so let me give you an example of the UK here. In the UK, uh, the 2011 census showed that around 7% of UK's population was South Asian, right? Mm -hmm. Now, there's just been a new census done right now, so I'm sure that number's gone up. Like, So we're talking between seven to 10%, but do you see seven to 10% of um you know asians on television and movies no you don't right so there's no, definitely no. a disconnect there and i, I wasn't on a documentary with the bbc as well about uh you know the uh, it, was, it was it was called my british asian alter ego and, and kind of the dual identity that a lot of people kind of face because your you know you, you, your parents are from somebody somewhere else but you're kind of born and brought up here and then you kind of have this conflict of you know where do you sort of belong, right? And when yeah. you don't kind of see representation in movies and, you know, things that you watch on a regular basis, TV shows and stuff, no, it is getting better. And this is the thing. But when you don't see that, you kind of have much more of a disconnect because you don't really know where you belong, right? And mm -hmm. now for me, so it was really significant. So when I, when I kind of posted about it and stuff, a few people were kind of asking me. And, you know, for me, that was really important, having somebody who's very talented and, you know, E, you've seen The Sound of Metal, right? No, I haven't actually. You haven't seen it, okay? You gotta see seen, it. It's I haven't seen actually any of the movies in the at least the best the best actor category. Okay. Uh, I haven't seen any of those movies yet. But okay, um, all right. But I mean, but I, I know. Uh, so I know Riz from. Um, uh, he did a HBO miniseries called The Night Elf. I believe that's what it's called. Mm -hmm. He was, fa and this is before I knew anything he had done or me before that. But I was like. You know, when he got that role, and it was a bit stereotypical because it was supposed to be played where he was playing a cab driver and did he do it or did he not do it? Uh, so they kind of played into those tropes. But what I enjoyed from him was how he thread the line as an actor, right? Because yeah. then you go, this this man has range. Like mm -hmm. there's just a, there's a range of skill sets. So for me also, it was... It was good to see. You saw that best actor category. You saw you saw Riz. You saw Stephen Gwen from uh, The Walking Dead fame. He's also the voice of Mark in Invincible. Um, and then you see Chadwick Boseman, and also you see um, Anthony Hopkins. Like it's it's a range of individuals. It's no longer just one you know one type of person. And to me, it was good to see that. Not because because for me, I've I've looked at it differently. I've never really thought about. Uh, representation uh, and maybe just because I grew up in Nigeria you know so it's a very different it might be a different mm. standpoint I didn't look at this those are American movies okay you know like 
cool. Uh, so it's only when I came here to the U.S. where then, you know, you start like, you see other people's reaction, you look at the movies, you go, okay, but okay, I saw Will Smith in this. Uh, who else is there? Denzel and, uh, okay, that's it. And then, it, <laughs> then I start understanding that you, for a while, you could only have two big black stars, not male stars or female stars, black stars at the same time. And I'm like, but the, I've seen some other black actors are really good. They should be, you know, they should be going up. They should be getting more roles. And then black female act- actresses, and I'm like, yeah. it's a tough time, you know? And in like, so, so I had to now put it in context of like, if black actors are getting that much, then what's the hope for? Asian American actors, and what's the hope for brown actors? It's like, it's like you oh, start just taking that scale lower, 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 lower. And... You know, or or even someone who is like of a mixed race, or you know, uh, which I always give the rock credit because you know he's he's half he's half black, half Samoan. He shouldn't really be as big as he is now. But again, it's that struggle that we all you know a, a lot of a lot of people of color face in the industry that mm. shouldn't be there because you you're right. Like a lot of movies should be better representation, and I don't and I agree with you. I don't mean it should be something where Yes, let's do this. You know, like, for instance, there's a talk of a black Superman. I don't want it. Because there are so many black DC characters that are well done. Plus, remember, Superman is basically Jewish. So why even change that in the first place? You know, yeah. you've got I mean, you don't need to change the Green basis Lantern. of the character. His character, exactly. You've got a black Green Lantern. You've got, I remember, um, I saw some guy on TikTok who said, you know, Green Lantern is what DC likes to play around with their... their Play with different alien races and also different, um, you know, uh, races, you know, ethnicities here on Earth. And this guy, sh- you know, his daughter wanted to read comics, and he's like, he walked into the comic book store and there was a Filipino Green Lantern, and so he was like, no way. So he bought it, gave it to her, and she's like, Daddy, she's like me, and I go. was like, Oh, he was like, What do you mean by me? In, because she's like, is it because it's a girl and she's younger? It's like, no, no, she's Filipina. And I'm like, ah, okay. So, you know, it's that, that kind of connection that, you know, you can bring in and you can write very core stories. You know, that's the thing that people forget that it's not just about, oh, I want to make this character black or white. Sometimes you can make a character a certain race and whatever, even if it's white, right? And have a core story that you, people will go, man, I never knew. You know, mm. that, that resonates, mm. so that connects. So it, it, people tend to forget that when we ask for diversity, we're saying take advantage of where that person comes from. You know, one of the big things about, um, you know, diversity for making proper change was, I remember when they cast uh, Jason Momoa as Aquaman. I'm a lifelong DC fan. Aquaman is blonde, blue eyes, right? Straight up. Jason Momoa is not that. Those are two different things. <laughs> And they asked Zack Snyder, they're like, why did you do that? He said, he is Polynesian. They and the water, they basically live, breathe the ocean. So Mm -hmm. he's like, it made sense for me to have something like that because I can tie in those roots. And they kind of tied it even to the Aquaman movie. And you're going, oh. And when you see me, like, yeah, yeah. I mean, mean, he's already water people already. So, all right, that makes sense. You know, even (laughs) just for a comic book movie. So yeah. those are the kind of things that help. And and look at it now. Aquaman made a billion dollars, right? Mm. People were like, that's great. Because people didn't look at his skin color or where he's from. They went, that worked. Yeah. And that's what people, I think that's what needs to that's- happen because... You know, it, it just makes more sense. So this is the thing. I mean, you mentioned stereotypes there. And this is the thing. I'm so fed up with seeing, um, you know, a brown character <laughs> being a taxi driver, uh, a terrorist. Let's be real here, right? Okay. The role, I think, yeah. you know, one of the jokes Riz says is that he was tired of being um, terrorist number two, right? Just being offered roles mm, for yeah. that, right? And it's annoying. It's like, because if you see The Sound of Metal, he's playing a character called Ruben. And the, it's, it's just about the character, right? It's not about... Oh, what races? They don't even need to even touch on that because he's playing mm-hmm. a character. I mean, like, e look, you know me, right? We, we we're friends. I mean, does it does it come up like you know when when I'm with most of my friends, it doesn't even come up like that that I'm a, a brown Muslim, right? It's just that we're, we're buddies. Sure, I don't drink al- alcohol and I I don't eat um, <laughs> pork, right? 
but 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 that's that's like a big deal you could have a vegan that doesn't you know drink alcohol that's not a big deal right you can still yeah exactly yeah you can still be a normal character and this is one of the things that i absolutely love about youtube and i'm going to go back to this is because i didn't have to wait for an opportunity me and you didn't have to wait for somebody to think okay this guy fits the bill right for a uh, tech personality or somebody who can be in front of camera we just picked up the camera and started making content and you know built an audience yeah. on that and that's something that i love about youtube because it, it 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 doesn't you know you don't have to kind of fight those stereotypes and i still get i mean obviously we we get racist comments on a very on a daily basis i get you know people say why are you faking your accent where are you from where are you from from this is something else that Riz Ahmed talks about where are you from from it's like look i'm from the uk right i'm born and brought up here i love my country right and yeah. you know uh, I'm, I'm i'm proud of being from here uh, if i if i didn't want to be here sure the weather's rubbish and but we all complained about that <laughs> but I, i'd be somewhere else right i'd be somewhere else and you know this is the thing i think it's so important seeing somebody like Riz Ahmed who did an amazing job in the sound of metal but he's such, such a great actor and uh just very talented seeing him kind of break that barrier and now um makes me hopeful that we'll see more of this going forward and it's, you know there's still a long way to go don't get me wrong there's a long way to go yeah, but yeah. these are steps in the right I mean, direction i mean it really makes sense i think what needs to happen and again it all comes down to money right and it all comes down to you know, studios understanding that it's a global audience. And they've kind of understood it where the studios pander to China and they do certain things to pander to the Chinese because the Chinese box office is really big, mm. um, but not understanding what it means. And um, I'm not bringing up, I'm, I'm going to bring up um, Zack Snyder again because he mentioned something that I found very interesting. And in the Snyder Cut, he had a character... Uh, I've forgotten his name in the comic, but he plays a character called the Atom. Same powers as the Ant-Man. He shrinks, you know, to very small size. But he's uh, he's um, he's of Chinese descent. And they asked him, he's like, oh, were you thinking of making a movie with that if, you know, you had gone to continue the whole thing? He's like, yeah, I was going to do an Atom movie in China that we were just partaking in. It was a Chinese movie. And he was like, they were like, Why? Why not make it? He's like, no, because that's where he's from. That's where he, the character is also based. So let us actually make that superhero from that perspective out, as opposed to be always the American, you know, forces going over or, you know, that, that whole idea. And I was like, that's actually cool. I mean, like, if that's what the character is, then let's see it from that character standpoint and not necessarily take it from, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, sure, he's part of the Justice League, but he's got to come to New York City, you know. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, stuff, I mean, for, for that know. particular character, yeah, but I mean, if there's somebody that's born and brought up in, in New York City, which there's see. millions, yeah. right, uh, in the US, in the UK, mm -hmm. literally millions and millions of, of people who identify, you know, like, as completely, they, they are, I mean, I'm much more British than anything else. Else, right uh, I don't connect yeah. with any other place more than Britain because that's literally where I've been born and brought up right and I think you've got so oh, many wait, wait, I, I thought I thought you connected with Singala though like you know you have a passport <laughs> well I, I'm an honorable <laughs> citizen of Singala <laughs> but that's 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 the story for another time but yeah I mean I, I just wanted to kind of touch on this because I just think diversity is so important uh, and uh, as I said I think there's a long way to go but I like that things are changing. You know, I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, when for me growing up, there wasn't really much of a role model that I had in, in like the movie industry and things like that. But I'm hoping that, you know, kids these days can have somebody. You you mentioned, you know, like that girl picking up the comic book and see, oh, it's, it's somebody that you can kind of relate to and identify with. Um, not just, you know, th th that, that sort of perception needs to change. And I'm glad it's finally changing. And you're right. A lot of it does have to do with money and where those markets are. But now we are looking at an international market, right? And, um, mm -hmm. you know, The Expanse is a, a show that I absolutely love uh. because of, again, the diversity there, because they're looking into the future and they're looking at all of these different cultures and stuff. And it's almost like one nation, right? That you've got people from all different races. And, but then, you, you know, 
in in a couple of hundred years or something that's what it's going to be like you're going to have people yeah. everywhere from you know you're not going to just go into particular areas where there's just going to be a particular type of person it's going to be completely diverse and mixed and that's one thing that i love about the tech community as well if you look at whenever we get together and the amount of diversity yes we need more female creators which we've talked about before but generally when you look mm-hmm. at the diversity of the different races and cultures and you know everybody's together in one place and we all have a common ground we all love tech we all get along absolutely fine and you know that's something that i love seeing and, I, and and that's something that we have in the tech community but we need to see um in mainstream media um tv shows movies big budget movies which everybody watches not only people from uk everybody watches across the whole world oh yeah i mean it's i think that's the thing people need to understand it's like you know uh, you watch a superhero movie i get like uh, we talk about it. I talk to my friends about it. My friends in Nigeria are like, did you just watch? Did you see that scene? You know, like everyone around the world that you know, if you get a chance to communicate with different people, are just talking about it. And then you go on social media platforms, right? You go on, TikTok is the best example because you tend to see just the mix, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and you're seeing people from different places around the world either, um, you know, acting out the scenes or talking about different things they like. And that is just where we want to get to as a collective. It's like mm. when it drops, it doesn't matter, right? It should be, what it should be is the work itself, the work should speak for itself and not be, not, it should not have a disparity. And I know some people will think, and some people will say, yeah, well, you know, uh, uh, it was always this way or that's what I know. And look, I get it because from a writer's perspective, the, and I think this is probably where some of that problem comes. When you go to writing school and you're writing uh, a script, the main character, if you're writing your first script, you always write yourself. And honestly, if I were to write a movie, it will be the main character will be kind of in line with what I think I am. That's what a lot of people do. So I get that part is difficult because sometimes you write it because you know, look, you're white, you write it the way you know. I get it. It's fine because that's what you know. But try try and understand also the world is a mix even if the main character is one thing but understand what does that character interact with around because that's, sometimes i think i think that's the thing that even is is also more important with exclusivity is how is the interaction with characters around the world if you say the character is in new york and and all we see is just one race they in new york Exactly. I mean, <laughs> New York is one of the most diverse places in the world. But I, I think that that's a very good point that you mentioned that if somebody's writing, they're going to be kind of writing as themselves, which is all well and good. But if you're like, I think one of the things for me, which I always recommend everybody can do if they are fortunate enough to do so is travel, right? Because when you travel, mm-hmm. you get to meet so many different people and you get to interact right, with so many different people that you actually... If you are then writing, yeah, sure, your main character might be somebody that kind of, you know, relates to you. But then the other characters in that story will naturally be from everywhere because that's what the world is right now. Right. We live Mm -hmm. in an international environment. You know, borders are there for, you know, physical purposes. But when when we talk about it digitally and we talk about how we all interconnect, there are no barriers. Right. Okay, yeah. yes, you have firewalls in places, but people just use VPNs and get over that anyway, right? We live in an international in environment and that's the way it should be, right? And, you know, as I said, I want to emphasize the fact that, you know, I'm not talking about diversity to check a box and for the sake of it, I'm talking about the fact that, you know, there is a clear representation representing what's actually out there, right? Everybody's yeah, yeah. watching your movies. There's people from all walks of life, all different things. You know, let's let's kind of see a bit of that. And we are we are seeing that. You know, we've got Kamal uh, Nanjiani who's going to be in the Eternals, and you know he got absolutely ripped for that. I was just like, my man, yeah, keep going, yeah. And he's he's he, you know that's something that I was really happy to see that we've got some uh, diversity there as well. And hopefully we'll be seeing more. But you know things are going in the right direction, and I'm 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 very happy to finally kind of see these things go into motion still a long way to go oh yeah yeah i agree it, it is expanding uh the other um brown character i'm excited to see is uh kamal khan which is miss marvel um mm. she has her movie coming up and she's also going to be in captain marvel too because i prefer her over captain marvel as a character so i i can't wait to see see her in action because again it's it's not just even that it, like i said it's the 
it's the representation. It's also uh, gender representation. It's also an age representation as well. Um, and showing those demographics where you can go like, oh, I can do this. You know, it kind of reminds me of how whenever people talk about Wonder Woman, they always say Wonder Woman inspires a lot of women, right? And some, mm. and even in the movie, she's like, you know, you can do it, princess. And some people may laugh at that and understand that, look, you know, for many people, just little things are what help them go over a hump or or see themselves differently and go like, yeah, I can. I, I think I can do this. You know, I, I've got that inspiration. So having those different pieces around, you know, of people of different races, genders, allows people to move forward and we get a better community where people can go like, yeah, I can achieve, I can, you know, I can progress. And it's not just always the same person because, you know, gone are the days where it's the same set of action stars, you know, it's, yeah, you know, it's totally it's very, I, I think you mentioned a really good point there. It's just like kind of seeing that and being like, oh, I can do that as well. Cause I've, I've had messages in the past from people saying, it's so good to see somebody like, you know, that looks like me, you know, a, a, a Muslim with a beard in a positive light, right? That's, yeah. um, you know, doing well. It's like, it's inspirational for them. And I'm no role model. Please don't see me as role model. Like, I don't <laughs> want that responsibility. But it's so, uh, whenever I read messages like that, it's like, it makes me feel like so good because it's just like, you know, that's something that I didn't have when I was growing up. So it's like, if, if, if a kid kind of sees that and that encourages them even 1% to kind of be like, no, I can do that as well. I can, you know, break those stereotypes. I don't need to be, you know, uh, typecast in, in, a, in a particular um, sort of role or just sort of um, view. I can I can do whatever I want. And, and that's something that's yeah. so, so important. Very true. Yeah. By the way, you mentioned some Nigerian movies. I think we're going to have to do a Nollywood review at some point. Because sure. <laughs> I absolutely love those. I absolutely love those. But oh, man. I have not watched one in a minute, man. <laughs> we, we're going to have to watch quite them a, together. They're quite, they're quite, there are quite a few on Netflix, and there was one you sent me the trailer, where the Nigerian guy got married to the to to an Indian an in, Nigerian girl got married to an Indian guy. Yeah, oh, let's let's remember, watch let's was. watch that. I thought the, I, I heard the reviews were really bad, but let's uh, let's watch that. And I, I think we'll we'll kind of just find it. We'll 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 we'll, we'll relate to it from uh, a certain aspect anyway. Oh, uh, let, let let's do this right. Let's let's we'll watch a Nigerian movie. We will watch a Bollywood movie. Right, and yeah. and then and then we can drop it in in different episodes. Let us know what movies to watch, guys. Uh, yeah. If you're listening on the podcast or you're watching on YouTube, what movies, Bollywood movies and Nigerian movies, we should watch. Yeah, just just tweet them to us um, uh, on our socials. You guys know you can just tweet at Super Seth Speaks or any one of ours, um, and uh, we'll, we'll see because that that'll be fun. That'll be a new different section to the podcast. I hope you enjoyed that clip. If you want to hear the full podcast episode, then that will be linked down below. And if you want to see more clips like this then be sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you don't miss them. Thanks for watching. This is Saf on Super Saf Speaks, and I'll see you next time.